jump on here because um, there's so much going on in the world and I've been thinking about I think there's something wrong with my shit let me see y'all can hear me alright um yeah okay cool yeah there's so much going on in the world right now and I know y'all got questions about how different folks think about different things and uh you know I got feelings on certain things so I'm gonna just say this, and then I'm gonna I'm open it up to questions. And the time I have on this is as long as it takes me to get to my next destination, which right now says about 30 minutes, a little bit less than 30 minutes. So, my first, and I don't know if I'm gonna save this, so <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna save this, save this but. What I will say is, it is very clear that black people are and have always been under attack in this country. It is surging right now because white supremacists feel like they are losing power, that their power is threatened and that they whiteness will not be their protection and their privilege forever. And so they are doing everything they can to, you know, fighting tooth and nail to hang on to that little power. Like Toni Morrison says, you know, if we take that away from you, all you have is your little self. And then what are you? And I, you know, I, I, I think, I think that that's, that's what's happening. And it's, and it's dangerous right now. You have Congress people, con you have a Congress, sitting congressman, uh, I don't remember his name, but uh, threatening, in Louisiana, threatening uh, citizens. He's a former sheriff, SWAT team person, you know, slave catcher. Uh, and he's publicly threatening folks. And then he put it on Facebook, took it back. Um, you know, talking about shooting folks and shit. Um, then you have another woman, white woman, running for Congress. Um, and she po posts a picture with the AR-15 next to the squad, right? So, and then you've got white supremacists running around killing folks. you got you know, white supremacist sheriff's department or policing system murdering people every day. Um, and people, are, and then like Trump caravans going through cities and shit, right? Yeah, Clay Higgins. Yeah, that bitch. Uh, yeah, I, you know, and I'm not, you know, holding back none of my, my shit. But, um, so... All I'm going to say is we got to protect each other. I've been saying that a lot lately. But I'm going to say it a little bit more blatantly. We got to protect each other now more than ever. And we have to think about how to do that and strategize on how to do that, right? Meaning like, who is around you? Who needs protection? How do you protect them, right? Black folks... I think we need to be real strategic about what type of protection we have available to us. If you are a gun owner, you need to make sure that you're more responsible than ever with those guns. Train up, train up, and form gun clubs and shit to protect your neighborhood. That's what I believe. Responsible gun owners, make sure look i'm from texas i don't believe everybody needs a gun 
I don't really believe in guns like that. Have I shot guns? Yeah. Am I scared of them? No, not, you know, in general. I'm scared of the people that operate them, right? Um, you know, do I think that there needs to be more, be way better regulation on guns? Absolutely. But right now, the state that we live in, should, could we have a place with no guns? Absolutely. I would love it if our whole country had no guns. But right now, the status that we live in is a whole bunch of, bunch of motherfuckers have guns, violent motherfuckers have guns, uh, that are white supremacists, that are armed and ready and have been training and militia trained um, and training to be militia uh, every day for years, right? And so we got work to do, okay? And so those of you who are veterans, who are you know, trained in tactics of protection and, and, um, and teams and shit like that, um, you know, those types of strategies apply. If you have that knowledge, apply it to community right now, help communities train up to protect, help activists train up to protect outside of guns and shit, right? There's other forms of protection. Um, you know, there's self-defense, obviously, and that needs to, we need to make sure that we train up uh, for that, make sure that we're training up in self-defense. Um, but also, like, making sure, you know, that there are um, there's strength in numbers, you know, that there are systems of phone numbers that we can call that, you know, people that we can call, um, that, you know, or, or, or emergency numbers, Google number, whatever it is, right. That at the drop of a hat, I can, we can call this number when there's danger involved and say where, or, or, or emergency response teams, community emergency response teams, we can form our own that specialize in certain tactics, right, to protect folks, so that if something happens, if white supremacists show up, if whatever, you know, in terms of like, yes, download signal, yes, making sure, we're we gonna get to that, we gonna get to that, but, uh, but making sure that if somebody is in trouble, that there's a rapid response team, right? That a bunch of people can show up. Um, and then the other, uh, you know, making sure that communication is protected. For organizers, making sure that you identify, when we're talking about identifying the most vulnerable, if you've got community organizers in your, in your city, in your sphere of influence, whatever, right? In your town, um, they need to be protected, right? If they're organizing for liberation, they are especially vulnerable. They are going to be targeted, right? So they need to be protected. But when you, um, when you're talking about, when you're talking about, um, you know, uh, communication. Communication needs to be protected. These are all things that when you're talking about mental health, we have to think about our how we're protecting our mental health. Um, you know, th so those are all uh, things that we need to be thinking about in terms of protection. And we and when we're talking about the most vulnerable, yes, we're talking about liberators, organizers, we're talking about children, right? We're talking about those who are trans folks, women, you know, we have to be very intentional about who we're protecting and how we're protecting them right now. Because, and I don't mean to trigger anybody's anxiety, so here's a trigger warning, okay? Shit is not getting better immediately, okay? Trump, folks, for this election period, Trump folks are getting worse. And we have to think about and strategize and just be real about. I know a lot of people are avoiding this conversation. What happens if Trump is removed from office? 
what happens if Trump refuses to leave office, right? That's their their grand wizard right now, okay? People are showing up for that motherfucker, right? What happens if he loses? What if, if he's removed from office? What happens if he refuses to leave? What happens if he wins? Who will be emboldened by that to do whatever the fuck, you know, because we are going to be protesting, right? And... And so make sure that we are gearing up for um, I would say worst case scenario. You know, for black folks. So that's really important to me to get out been on my heart i'm saying it here you are do what you will with that information um what else was i gonna say what up ogi um so anyway those are all all really important trump is not the white supremacist that is the most dangerous but he is the one he is the white supremacist in chief okay so he's their de facto leader um because he has the largest pulpit right now but you know there's folks you, know, you say you see those uh black folks arming up in 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 louisiana that's david duke territory you feel me so that's 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 real kkk shit you know um they're out there risking and and know they know firsthand the dangers that are involved okay so um that it, it, it there are more blatant and obvious threats there but Trump caravan came through Woodland Hills here right up above Los Angeles you know uh, they went through uh, Oak Cliff so they getting bold they getting real bold Oak Cliff if you don't know nothing about uh, Oak Cliff um, um, that's a good question Kimmy I'm gonna I'm put some questions up here, but um, where do we get? Who is organizing the strategic effort? The, the strategic efforts. So, in every city, it's gonna be different. It's gonna be different. I think what's most important is getting your personal strategy together, right? Your neighbors. Who do you live around, right? Um, I think that's most important is getting a personal strategy together being led by while searching for so i'll put it this way don't wait for to get with an organization and people that are already doing it right um don't wait for that but continue to search for it so who are the organizers in your community that are doing this work right who are the reputable um you know folks like you can ask folks like Ignite Kindred. I'm not saying that they're doing this work. Ignite Kindred, um, or uh, or you know, uh, Southerners on New Ground, or Dream Defenders, or Black Lives Matter, Los Angeles. So th those folks, you can ask them what that looks like. They might not be doing that work, right? Because they are inundated with other liberation work. I'm not saying that they are doing that work, but those are reputable organizations that might be able to refer you to somebody, right? And you can get in with them. Um, um, you can get in with those organizations and, 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 you know, the people that are doing that important work in your community. Can you get around this person? Because that thing is hurting. Oh, never mind. Um... Uh, and then you can can like 
uh, ask them for referrals or, or, or whatever, the people that are doing really important work. There's some really dope folks in DC. There's some really dope folks in New York. Um, but in terms of like that personal protection, um, uh, make sure, you know, somebody said most city, Texas, there's people doing like Texas organizing project. You can get involved with those. You need to get involved with those folks. The people that I just named Southerners on new ground, ignite kindred dream defenders. Um, uh, you know, all those types of folks, um, black lives matter, LA, these are justice LA, those, those dope, um, organizations, um, SE justice group in the Bay area that, you know, those are really dope organizations, um, that, uh, are doing really great work that you need to be involved in. But through those organizations, you can ask about the, these protective measures, right? And if they have any suggestions and, and do that research, I think it's really, really important. I do not have a list right now. Um, and I am overwhelmed, so I'm working on it, but I ain't going to make no promises. I don't know when that would be coming out. And when, but either way, it's important to me to just spread this message that it needs to be done, that y'all need to do this research and also um, identify folks within your community that might be able to do this stri strategic work. Um, because when you have a larger strategy, right, somebody who's covering a whole district or a whole city, right, um, or a county, uh, they cannot come up with a specific plan for you and your people. Community is a broad term. So you have the, you know, black community, you have the diaspora, right, global, then you have the U.S., and then you have city to city, state to state, municipality, you have different districts, you have your own neighborhood. When it boils down to it, you don't want to have to depend on somebody across the city, right? So get to know your neighbors. It's important to know your neighbors, um, not just the neighbors that you like. It's important to know all your neighbors. You need to know who's problematic. You need to know who might be that Trump motherfucker that might do some shit, right? And y'all need to make a plan just in case. Um, so you need to know all of your people. Uh, now, I ain't gonna lie. I'm a little bit of a hypocrite in this. I haven't met all my neighbors. I've, I know a lot of them, but I haven't had time. I've been running around, but I'm, this is partly me speaking to myself. I'm making a more of an effort to make sure that I get to know folks and know who's around so that I know if something pops off, who it probably, who, who, who probably did it, if it was a negative thing or who I can call if it's a positive thing. Right. Um, or who, who is more prone to be open to this, these protective measures, who has children that need to be protected, right? Who should be, you know, if something pops off in the neighborhood, who should be the first person that we go to? Um, so, so that is, these are all, you know, really important things to consider. Um, all right, let me look at these questions. Y'all be asking some wild questions um when you're saying okay here's one when you're saying self-defense are you recommending people arm up lots of people in here think that just wanted to clarify so we don't have people getting um i'm not not telling people to arm up okay i'm not saying don't i'm saying if you're gonna do it Make sure you are a responsible gun owner. Um, in this climate for black folks, I'm not going to limit you on your protection. I do not usually recommend people go and buy guns because most people did not grow up with them, don't know what the fuck they're doing. Okay. And I grew up with guns uh, all around me responsible gun owners. I also grew up with other folks who grew up with guns around them who were not responsible gun owners. So growing up with guns around you is not a prerequisite for you to have a gun. Okay. I've had folks, many people die in school when I was in high school from gun violence. Okay. I've had uh, two kids were playing with a gun and one of them, young black kid, 
is now paralyzed from the waist down uh, because they accidentally let the gun all, go off in the house. You know, I've had a, a dude, uh, one of my buddies in high school was running with a gun in his pants and ended up shooting himself. Okay, so these are, you know, folks that were always around guns. So I'm not advocating that everybody go out and buy a gun. But what I am saying is, if you can be a responsible gun owner, if you are all checked out, uh, you know, mentally, and you have to think about protecting yourself as well. Part of protecting yourself might be not having a gun in the house, okay? Um, but if you are a responsible gun owner, if you can be a responsible gun owner, if you can do the due diligence of researching what a responsible gun owner is, and if you fit those qualifications, then sure, go out and get a gun if you're gonna use it in the right way. Um, so am I saying go ahead and get armed up? No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is do whatever you gotta do and utilize what you ever, whatever uh, tools are available to you responsibly, one for liberation, two protection. Right, for right now, in these times, we need to be researching protection, community protection, more than ever. And I'm not talking about, I'm talking about for black folks. And white folks, I, you know, I'm not asking you to co-op this shit or nothing like that. I'm asking you to utilize your white privilege for protection of black folks. Y'all ain't the ones under attack. I'm talking about y'all utilizing your privilege to protect black folks. It's going beyond posting on Instagram. It's going beyond showing up at protests. Yes, y'all made it this far. Grateful. Keep showing up. But go beyond that. What are you doing to protect black folks? Black folks, allies will come. Accomplices will come. And, and try to help out in whatever way they can in the liberation process. Part of protection is being very aware of who these people are and questioning everything. I don't give a fuck how long you've known an ally. I don't trust everybody. I don't trust most people, okay? So if they are providing tools, great. But that does not mean that you give them carte blanche to do whatever they can in your life and in your movement. And it does not mean you put them in a position of leadership in your movement, okay? Um, but that, you know, just because, you know, if you, if you are non-black, a non-black ally or whatever, and you are trying to provide protection and tools um, of protection to black folks during this time and they don't trust you, that don't mean you stop doing the work. They shouldn't trust you. Um, but that means that does not uh, absolve you of your responsibility to do this work. Right now, we need to be super protective. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Um, and yes, Latinx people, especially if, it, if you're, uh, Afro Latino at this time, um, yeah, brown folks, the undocumented folks, um, making sure that undocumented folks and trans folks and those with who are differently abled, those who are deaf, blind, you know, make sure we are always seeking out the most vulnerable. Those who are under attack right now need to make sure we are doing whatever we can to protect ourselves. That is an active, active strategy of research and assessment. Um and constantly reassessing because we have not done this before. We have not been in this position before. 
Um, I don't care who you are and what you've been through. Um, look at Patrick. All right. Um, I'm here. Uh, what up, Steph? In Serbia. Love you. Love y'all. I'm getting out the car now. Um, that is my spiel. Um, all right, peace.